read very quickly because of time, but I would want to read together with you uh, Psalms 126, verse 1 to 6. But for now, I'm going to read Ecclesiastes 3, verse 1 to 11 on my own. Then together, we read Psalm 126, verse 1 to 6. I'll finish with Psalm 103, just 1 to 6. Solomon's general observations, Ecclesiastes 3, from verse 1 to 11. Everything has its time. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to gain, and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to throw away, a time to cheer, and a time to sow, a time to keep silent, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hurt, a time of war, and a time of peace. What profit is the worker from that which he labors? I have seen the God-given task with which the sons of men are to be occupied. He has made everything beautiful in his time. I'll stop there. He has made everything beautiful in his time. I want to read Psalm 126. Do I have Psalm 126? Yeah. We are going to read that together in unison. Are you on Psalm 126? Let us read. When the Lord brought back the captivity of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has great done things for us, and we are glad. Bring back our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. Those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. He who continually goes forth weeping, bearing seed for sowing, shall doubtlessly come again with rejoicing, bringing his shifts with him. Let me finish up with um, Psalm 103, just verse 1 to 5. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. He forgives all our iniquities. He heals all our diseases. He redeems your life from destruction. He crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. He satisfies your mouth with good things. And he renews you like an eagle. Let us pray. Father, we thank you this morning. So we have gathered to celebrate. We have gathered to worship you. We have gathered in your name, Yahweh. We have gathered in your name, Yeshua, Hamashiach, Jesus the Christ. We have gathered for you. We have gathered to celebrate your goodness, your mercy, and your loving kindness in the days of our lives. We have gathered to say thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Abba. Thank you, Yahweh. Thank you, Jehovah. Thank you, Father. We have gathered, O oh Lord, to say you are the only one who can do exceedingly abundantly more than what we ask or expect because of the power that you have given unto us. We have gathered to say we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. We are gathered to say we are the head and not the tail. We are above and not below because of your spirit that is in us. We have gathered to say we were purchased not by perishable things like gold and silver, 
but by the blood of the Lamb who redeemed us from destruction, we have gathered to say, thank you, Father. Thank you, Abba. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for the many benefits that you have given our lives. We have gathered to say, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and do not forget his benefits. We have gathered to celebrate the benefits of being in the house of the Lord. The benefits of being the children of God. We have gathered this morning, O oh Lord, to celebrate you for what you have done for us. We thank you, Lord, and we bless your name. We have gathered to thank you for what you are about to do. There is something that you have done already, but we have gathered to thank you for what you are about to do. Because you are always a Lord of a next level. I thank you. I bless your holy name. And I glorify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Today is a day for indeed to, to celebrate. I'm going to speak on our mouth is filled with laughter. Our mouth is filled with laughter. It is very rare for someone who is going through an excruciating time in life to laugh. When you are going through a terrible time, it is a time of sorrow. It is a time uh, of crying and mourning. But that's not what we are gathered today for. We have gathered for laughter. Because there is time for everything under the sun. There is time to laugh. Where we celebrate what the Lord has done for us. We have gathered for time to thank God for his faithfulness. We have gathered to say, Lord, you are able. You are more than able to do exceedingly abundantly because he is God. We have gathered to celebrate our brethren who have worked so hard, who had had time of sweat, time of tears, time of hard work, time of endurance and patience and trials. We have gathered to celebrate the hours and hours in the labs where our brothers would spend the whole night like hours in the lab to find uh, just that result to come out. Working on projects, working on papers, on theses, on dissertations, including defending and everything that a student is are, are required to do. We have gathered to celebrate Sister Clara, Sister Ivy, Sister Makafue, our brother Opeemi, Brother Thomas, Brother Emma, Brother Hayford, Brother Eric, Brother Edward, Brother, brother Jeremiah, Brother Enoch. There may be other brothers and other sisters that I may have left in my list to celebrate. Sister Dio graduated also. Ah, I want my cake. We have gathered to celebrate Sister Dio, who has graduated. I have also gathered to celebrate someone who is very dear to me and very close to me. Uh, and it is marvelous in our eyes. It is marvelous in our eyes. As I reflected the semesters that you guys went through, you are the group that brought COVID. <laughs> because, I mean, <laughs> you, just, you just do not want to work hard. And say, let's just bring COVID so that we don't have to go to labs and we just do everything from home. You went through a lot of stress during COVID. It was time of life and death. I remember when COVID hit in the 20, in, mainly in 2020, we had a lot of senior citizens who could not leave home for three months straight. The fear that gripped the nation and our media also helped in that process. But it just led to a lot of stress. There is enough stress for being a student. But if you add stress of COVID and everything else, that's just unbearable. I, I, I remember the time that we spent you know, being home with girls and trying to study and, 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 and everything. We gather to celebrate you. 
Some of the people that we've gathered to celebrate, you've kind of moved another step already. Some have already gone to graduate school, and you are thriving in graduate school, and we thank God for that. Uh, some we have gone through interviews or are going through interviews is another level. Some have transitioned to go to a new city or a new place. Uh, all this brings a lot of heightened distress. But we have gathered to celebrate not stress, but what the Lord has done because he has taken away that stress from you. I remember some of the people who are graduating today, uh, they had to... Uh, navigate long distance relationships. I don't know why people leave their girlfriends back in Ghana or somewhere in another country. Because it leads to more pressure and more stress. I pray for those to join you quickly as soon as possible in Jesus' name. We always have to deal with family pressure. Whatever happens, home, though you are in Johnson City, you have to still deal with what's happening in Kumas and Kaduna in Zimbabwe. It's just the life of an African. They call you, oh, your sister can't go to school because there's no fees. You are going to crack from whatever you have, the little that you have. So we have gathered now to celebrate everything that you have done over time to reach where you have reached. It is indeed a season, a time, a moment to rejoice for what the Lord has done for us. Let me tell you something. God promises victory. And there are no two doubts about it. When you are a child of God, victory is granted. You are going to be victorious. But it does not uh, promise an easy process to get to the victory. During the process of getting to the victory, sometimes he works with at, at a personal level. Sometimes he is working uh, endurance in us. Sometimes he's working our character in us sometimes is working patience. So we go through trials. And these are the trials that you've gone through as you were navigating these some four years, some two years, some three years of study. But victory is ours through Christ Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. And I like it in, um, in, in Psalms. When Psalm 126 tells us uh, what happened when the Israelites were coming out of captivity. He says, when the Lord brought us back from the captivity of Zion, we were like those who dream. There are moments in life when God has done something so good that you don't even feel like it's you who's going through that moment. You appear as if you are dreaming. Those people we have wedded, you know what I'm talking about. The day of your wedding mostly is a day that you'll be like, wow, I didn't think this day was coming. I didn't see this day coming the way that it has finally come. It is like you are dreaming. The day of graduation is another day that you think about everything that you have gone through. All the trials, all the hard work, all the sweat, all the tears, are some uncertainties, everything that you have gone through. Now you have graduated. I can tell you one of the challenges those who are, who are graduated that you are going to face. You are going to wake up tomorrow and you'll be thinking like, there's an assignment that I did not submit. There's just something that I, that I haven't done. And if you have any dream of an assignment which is not submitted, just ignore that dream. It is just a <laughs> It is just the subconscious just to bring things back to the conscious because you have been dealing with this for a long time. He says, then our mouth was filled with laughter. Today is a day of laughing. And our time with singing. Today is a day of singing. The Bible says, laugh with those who laugh. This is not a day of mourning. We are celebrating with those who are celebrating. Then they say it among the nations. Testimony comes from outside. Who we'll see what's happening inside. The Lord has done great things for them. And this is the reason why we have gathered today. Because the Lord has done great things for you. The Lord has done great things for us. 
and we are glad. Our hearts are full of joy because of what the Lord has done. He ends up and he says, those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. I don't know an international student who come and go through the program and not have any tears, at least one tear along the line. You always go through a moment. You always go through a time where you think of, I can just throw the towel. I can just do without this. Because you go through a lot. You go through a lot of tears. But the Lord is with you. You guys, have you ever faced this thing that is called a, a mental block? I was talking to a, a, a doctoral student recently. And he was saying, Pastor, you need to pray for me. I'm going through a mental block. And I said, talk to me more. And he say, she says, I can read a whole article. Very simple, straightforward article. If you ask me what the article says, I don't remember a thing. That's what is called a mental block. There's a time that I was doing my master's. And I had some challenges that I went through. Went through some operation of appendicitis two weeks, three weeks after I just come from home. I don't know what happened in the plane. That made my appendicitis to be removed as soon as I arrived here. And I, I was taking this course. And it was a difficult course to me. It is like you are starting this course at a master's level, but you have not, never done anything related to it. And there's a lot of technical information that you were supposed to have known, prerequisite information. I did not have any clue. I remember I was taking four courses. I was doing very well in three of the courses. But in this particular course, I was struggling. After the operation that I did, uh, I went through a period of a mental block. I would read the whole chapter, and I would not remember anything from the chapter. So by the time that the professor said, you are supposed to submit uh, this, I did not. And I would come to class late in that particular class, and I would leave early before I see this professor. And it worked out for a little bit until the end of the semester. When the professor was now, it, it was those hybrid courses where you have masters and doctoral students in the same course. And the person who was teaching this course was teaching it so high in order to, you know, to help the, 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 graduate, the, the doctoral students. I, that made it worse for me. I remember that I had a mental block that I could not remember anything about that course. Then he called me to his office. Uh, you talk of uh, being afraid or being fearful I was seeing myself at Dallas International Airport. I was seeing myself going back to Africa. <laughs> I was seeing people are, you know, receiving me at Harare International Airport without a degree. And I see people laughing at me and say, he went to America and he came back empty-handed. When I was going to see this professor, it was scary. And he asked me, I've talked with your other professors. And in all your classes, you have an A. What's happening with my class? And I had this mental block. I don't know where it came from. I guess from the pit of hell. I prayed. I said, Lord, help me. The professor was very good. He says, I understand you. And I told him about the operation that I went through, some issues that I was navigating back home. And he says, I will give you an incomplete and you complete during the break. Or if you can submit A, B, C, D, you pass the course. I did not have anyone to pray with. I did not have any church that knows anything spiritual. I was dealing with some spiritual baggage that I was going through. I remember fasting for three days. And the mental block just lifted away. I worked for two consecutive nights. I wrote a third page paper. When I gave the professor and he read it, 
he thought I plagiarized it from somewhere. So he put it in the system which shows the percentage of plagiarism and it was like 2%, which means that there's no plagiarism. Because obviously you are going to say some words that some author has said. Right. He says there's no plagiarism. This is original work. And I thank God for that. So if you can talk of mental blockage, I know. Because I've gone through it. And I know how difficult it can be. Being a student in this country is not easy. It is not easy. So I know, I suspect what you've gone through. That's why I say this is now time for laughter. It is like a dream to us. It is like a dream to you what the Lord has done for you. And he has filled our mouth with laughter, our tongue with singing. And we testify today that look what the Lord has done for them. The Lord has done great things for you. But I'm not only talking to people who are graduating. I'm also talking to people who are not graduating. Because the Bible says, rejoice with those who rejoice. There's a reason for that. Because God looks at the heart of man. The Bible says his eyes are moving to and fro the earth to look at the heart of man and test man. If uh, Thomas is graduated, then the Lord does not look at Thomas who have graduated. The Lord is going to look at Emom who does not graduate and see if you are happy for Thomas. And if you are happy for Thomas, your graduation is already guaranteed whenever it's going to happen. When you rejoice with those who are rejoicing, the Lord knows that you like rejoicing. So he brings situations that makes you to rejoice. So next time you see others rejoicing, rejoice with them. When you see others mourning also, what? Mourn with them. That's what the Bible says. Because the Lord tests our hearts. So today I am rejoicing. Not only because of you who have graduated, but I'm also rejoicing for my next level. There's a child who says graduating is going to the next level. I thought it was a very philosophical idea. Graduating is going to the next level. So we are all growing to the next level. Then the last part that I like, they say, he who continually go, going forth weeping, you have whipped, bring seed for sowing. Why that you are weeping, you are giving in the house of the Lord. That's bringing seed for sowing. You are giving in the house of the Lord. You are helping people back home. You are helping someone. You are doing something. Everything that you do is sowing a seed. And as you do that, shall doubtlessly come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. When you harvest a new harvest, you bring sheaves from the new harvest. So you are celebrating today and we are celebrating with you. Let me finish with this. Psalm 103 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul. And there are six covenant blessings that were mentioned there. And he says, God does these things to anyone who becomes a child of God. When you choose to be a child of God, you are making a covenant through the blood of Jesus with God. He does these six things. He forgives our iniquities. He heals our diseases. He redeems our life from destruction. He crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercies. And he satisfies our mouth with good things. Then he renews us like an ego. This is the life of a child of God. You have to go through episodes and episodes of these th six things happening in your life. If you become ill at any given time, you will be healed. If you fall, I pray, do not fall. You will be forgiven. If you are going through a situation that is life and death, he will redeem you. He is the one who crowns you with his tender mercies. He is the one who satisfies you with good things. He is the one who continues to renew you and renew you and renew you. You know, I had a birthday in November. And I went to the mirror. And when I looked to the mirror, I saw this young gentleman. <laughs> Pastor Poe is laughing at me. I saw this young gentleman. And I said, is this gentleman in the 40s? I think I'm still back to the 30s. <laughs> he renews us 
like eagles. I want to finish with 10 things, and I'm not taking time, 10 things are uh, what I can probably say the beatitudes of success are for those people who have graduated. Those 10 things are important. Uh, they are not in any order. I just thought of them uh, as I've walked through life. Number one, we should be thankful. If there's anything that we are supposed to do on a daily basis, it is to be thankful. The Bible says, be thankful in everything. Even when you are going through trials, the Bible says, rejoice in that. Be thankful in every situation that comes your way. The Bible says, uh, we enter the gates of God with what? Thanksgiving. Then when we are in the gates now, we are moving to the next level, which is the courts of God. We go there with what? With praise. Remember to be thankful. There are over 770,000 people during these two years of COVID who have died. Some of them were medical doctors. Some of them were pharmacists. Some of them were whatever you are or you are not yet. But they what? They died. How about you? If you are hearing what I'm saying, you are not yet dead. So be thankful in everything. Don't think that it was our wisdom, our cleverness that COVID did not come your, your home. It was by grace. So be thankful in what? In everything. The state that you have finished right now, be thankful for that. I know sometimes we are human. We always want more and more and more and more. And we fail to hold on in the moment and thank God for the moment because we are thinking of what? More. We are thinking of the next we always compare ourselves with our neighbor because the neighbor has already gone to the next level. We are always thinking, I should be at the next level. And God look at us and say, these people are so ungrateful. Don't think that it was the Israelites only in the wilderness. We're not thankful. We are sometimes unthankful. So I have this moment, a moment of thanksgiving. There are times that I say to, to my wife, let's go to church. And he says, uh, okay, what are we going to pray for today? And I said, nothing. We are just going to go to church for one thing. It could be Wednesday. We are just going to go to the church to thank God for what he has done for us. So today, I don't want you to ask anything new. I want you to be thankful. Thankful opens the doors for the next miracle. Thankfulness opens the door for the next thing. If you are not with what you are doing right now, why should God give, God give you the next thing? Sorry, I'm, I'm passing. So you can put Pastor Dumisas up. If you are not thankful for what God has done for you right now, why should He give you the next level? I mean, what, what's the justification? Those with children, you know what I'm talking about. You know, our children, you, they say, we want Chick-fil-A, we want Chick-fil-A, and you go to Chick-fil-A. And after they eat Chick-fil-A, they are saying, what are we doing after Chick-fil-A? Are we going to go to play to the jump place? You know, they, they haven't even said thank you for what they've asked for. And it drives us crazy as parents. What sort of children are we raising when thankful like this? Why did you not thank me for what I've done already? So God, our Father, look at us and say, huh, this daughter. So be thankful. Can you repeat after me? Be thankful in everything. Number two, the attitudes of success is patience. I haven't seen a person who's successful who hasn't waited. You have to wait for your turn. When you go to bank and there's a line in the bank, what do you do? Even if, if, if you are rushing to the airport, you can't tell people to, to say, you know, I'm rushing to the airport, let me be saved. You wait. Be patient. Because patience builds character. Patience builds what? Character. So God is interested in character. Because he wants some characters to use for his kingdom. So he's not going to use people who are so impatient People who can't wait. In life, we have to wait. We have to pray. There's time for everything. Time to pray. 
time to fast, time to wait for the answer until the Lord has done that. People who are not patient, sometimes we struggle with depression, with anxiety, with uh, all sorts of stress, heightened stress. I'm not saying those are caused by not patience only. There are many factors. But you need to be patient and wait upon the Lord. The Bible says, wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. So patience is very important. People who are not impatient, in most cases, they do not get the best thing. They make wrong decisions. I have seen people who rush to get this because that's what was available. Then three years down the line, this comes. And you'll be like, oh my goodness. Why did I get this when this was going to come? That's when you want to change your decisions. There are a few decisions in life that are very difficult to change. So patience is important. Number three, humility. If you do a study of the Bible from the Torah to the end of the Bible, the Lord has always exalted the humble. I've seen this because I was very proud when I was young and growing up. And I've come to know that the Lord always exalted the humble. And I said, in life I will be humble so that he will lift me up. The Bible says those who are lying on the ground, they do not fall. You have to lie on the ground throughout the days of your life so that the Lord can what? Lift you up. If a person who is full of pride and showy and want to show off who I am, the day that you fall, the heavier the falling and the louder the laughing. So remember, as you have achieved great things, good things, to remain what? Humble. And as you are humble, the Lord will exalt you. Number four, hard work. I'm not going to spend much time on that because you've done that already. For you to graduate, you know what you've done. Hard work. When you were working on that thesis, when the professor was changing all the things that you have written, because you have written it in, uh, you, you, you were translating from, from Chui to English. <laughs> Or from Yoruba to English. <laughs> and you know, it's like, why is he cutting off all my words here? You know, that you have to be patient, you have to work hard, and the Lord is the one who will help you. Hard work pays. At the end of the day, we are celebrating you because of hard work. Let me rush and finish. Uh, then be prayerful. Be prayerful. I, I've been having the benefit of living longer and also having the benefit of being a pastor over time, I've come to realize I've seen people who are on the same level. One very prayerful, loves the things of the Lord. One, uh, don't care. The Lord always blesses me no matter what. And I've seen them finishing the same level together. And I wait for 10 years. After 10 years, you see people are in different platforms altogether. One has gone so far and one is still lingering in a certain position. I've seen that in life. And I've come to realize that if you are prayerful, there is nothing, no obstacle that you cannot move away. Be prayerful. In all things, pray. In all seasons, pray. In everything, pray. Ask the Lord, Lord, this is where I am. Let me tell you the best time to pray is when everything is okay. That's the time to what? To pray. The best time to fast is when everything is okay. And we do the reverse. It is when you're going through a tough time. You know, I need to get into a prayer program. I need to fast about this thing. It's too late. The time that you are at easy, that's the time to invest in prayer, in fasting. And in, then when the tough time comes, you just glide through. Because you have prayed it already. Jesus was talking to Peter. Peter, the devil wants to sift you like grain. But I've already done what? In good times, everything is okay with you, Peter. But there's bad time that is coming. But I've already prayed for the bad time before it happens. So the best time to pray is when everything is okay. I haven't seen a person who is truly prayerful person not moving on in life. I did not say you don't go through trials. 
I did not say you don't go through challenges. I did not say you don't go through tough times. You go through them. Obstacles are part of life. But you do those them because you are a prayerful person. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, are you prayerful? Then he says, do you mean it? Then you just smile. Don't say anything. Just smile. Prayer changes things. Prayer moves mountains. I've looked at the people that I went to uh, Great Golf with. I saw the people who passed. And I waited for 10 years. I saw that those who were prayerful, they were in a better position. Though they passed less than those who were not prayerful. Because prayer makes things to work and to change. Because of God. Number seven, connect. Life is a product of relationships. Some of you, you came here because of relationships. Some of you, when you left, you left here to go to the next school, it was relationships. Relationships are important. Remember to continue connecting. There was a man called Paul, but you hear of Silas because of what? Connection. If there was no connection, Silas could not have fulfilled his ministry because there was no Paul for him. There is someone who mentors you, who coaches you. There was a man called Timothy. And you hear that Timothy get a lot from Paul. Even when Jesus came on earth, he was God himself, the Bible say. He could have come and changed the world without anybody. He could do whatever he wanted. But he did not. What did he do? He connected. He first found 12. He trained 12. The Bible says that one time he sent 70 disciples. So he trained more 70 and he sent them. And he continued to connect. So in life, connect. Sometimes what makes us not to connect is pride. Oh, I don't want, I can do this on my own. When you see the attitude of I can do this on my own, I don't need others. Know that the devil wants you to fall. Connect with others. Continue aligning with others in connection. You go far in life. The next one is favor. The Bible says favor does not come from the east, from the west, or from the south. Favor comes from the Lord. In life, you need favor. It is called the favor factor. When favor is upon your life, life becomes so simple and so easy. Part of where favor comes from, from prayerfulness. And many other areas. But when you spend more quality time with the Lord, there is no man who cannot favor you. Even your enemies can end up what? Favoring you. Because you have spent time with the Lord. So you need favor in life. You need people to favor you for you to move forward. Moving forward, someone makes you to move forward. Someone promotes you to the next level. So you need the favor of your professors. You need favor of the employers. You need favor of people. And that favor doesn't come from people. It comes from the Lord. You don't focus on people for the favor. You focus on the Lord and he gives you the horizontal favor. But you look at the vertical favor. It is important. Then the next one is a good name. A good name. The Bible says a good name is better than riches. Someone may be a billionaire or a trillionaire. It's one thing. But a good name is better than that. Because there is testimony behind a good name. One of the fruits of the Spirit is goodness. So you need the goodness of the Lord. Number nine is mercy and grace. Mercy and grace. You need mercy. It is just by grace that we are not consumed. The Bible says, I will have mercy upon whom I will have mercy on. For Jacob, I loved. But for Esau. And it happened while they were still in their mother's womb. When they had not done anything good or anything wrong. So it is by mercy. It is by grace. Unmerited favor. You have done nothing, but you receive it. 
You need that, and it comes only from the Lord. Even when you go to a court before men, it is the favor of the Lord. It is the mercy of God. It is the grace of God that will make you to triumph. You know, it almost reminds me of interviews. I remember this interview that I've come to. And I've said it probably years ago. I did not do a good job. Sometimes I just testify the truth. I did not do a what? A good job. When this job was advertised, it's a long story, but I'm not going to go to the whole testimony. The, all the people who applied for this job, they all had finished their doctorates. They all had published a lot. They were all from the here. They were, one of them has been a professor for 13 years, and he had written a book in behavior analysis that was used in the school system. And there's a guy who applied for the same position. He had not PhD as yet. He had no, even one publication, he had nothing to show to. If there's a better, easy work for people who are interviewing to remove, it, to, to re it was so easy. Just remove this guy. I came to the interview. And when I came to the interview, I reflected and I looked back. I did not do a good job. Four days after the interview, I got the job. I don't know up to now what did they use. Up to now, I'm still thinking 13 years down the line. What? <laughs> How did they end up there? That is called God's mercy. That is called God's favor. That is called God's grace. It is not the one who runs. It is not the one who's swift. It is not the one who's strong who makes it in life. It is the one whom the Lord blesses and gives favor. Today I speak favor upon your life. Today I speak the mercy of God upon your life. Today I speak the grace of God upon your life. Because when you are operating in favor, there is no more methodology. God just take you from the lowest ladder to the upper ladder. And when you look back, you say, how did this happen? It is just God who favors who he chooses to favor. The last one is wisdom. In life, we need what? Wisdom. There's no place in the Bible where wisdom has been ever looked down upon. The whole Proverbs, it says, seek her, seek wisdom. And when you find her, you have found the principal thing. The most important thing in life is what? Wisdom. But the good part of wisdom is this. The beginning of wisdom is what? The fear of the Lord. So everybody has an equal opportunity. Everybody, if you fear the Lord, the wisdom of the Lord comes upon you. Then number two, you can ask for it. Is there anyone who lacks wisdom among you? James tells us. Let him what? Ask the Lord. That, 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 that's the good part of it. There's no other qualification. If you fear the Lord and you ask for it, the Lord will bless you. The Lord will bless you. These ten things are important. And as you look at them, everybody can get them. There's no need of going to school to get them. And there's nothing wrong about going to school. Let's go to school. But everyone can get them. Meaning that a person would never go to school if he is thankful, if he is prayerful, if he connects with others, if he does those ten things that I've told, talked about, you see them moving high. So today I'm going to call the people who are graduating. If you come to the front, we just want to celebrate you. We just want to celebrate you. People who graduated yesterday, please just come to the front. People who are going to take pictures, do we have picture taking people or people taking pictures? Whatever comes first. Yeah, I saw Rumbi. Can, can you call Rumbi for me? I think she came with a camera. She wanted to take pictures. We would wonder a few, few pictures. 
I would want to thank God for what the Lord has done for, for you. And uh, needless to say, and it's important, of course, I just want to thank, you know, this place is decorated for you. Brother Isaac and his team, they do a good job. I think now we have to employ them for, for weddings also. Because they do, <laughs> with just one hour, two hours, uh, thank you so much, Brother Isaac and your team. Tell us about your team at the end. We'll give you time. Thank you so much for doing this. You guys have worked hard. We are rejoicing now because of your hard work. But I'm just going to give you some moments uh, to, 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 to talk to us. We want to, people, they are just seeing the beauty that you have in the handsome that is in the front here. But they want to hear your voices. Tell us, what have you gone through in this program? Was it a piece of cheesy? Was it so easy? What's happening in life? Is there anything that you want to share with us? We'll give everybody some few minutes. Uh, you can just put the time off because we just want to uh, these people to have time. So I'll just start. Uh, Sister Dio wants to start. Then after Sister Dio. Hallelujah. Praise God. Um, my name is Zoromi Dayo, and um, I don't know where to start from. I, I, I remember telling someone that when you hear other people's story, you, you will know your own story is just, you know, it's just by the way. But um, I just want to thank God. I think, first of all, I want to thank God for my mental state. Of course, I graduated yesterday, but my mental state seems to be the bigger testimony for me. Because, so normally I was supposed to finish on May, and um, I had to finish during the summer because I, I faced some challenges um, while I was doing my thesis. So last year, October, I got a news from home that destabilized me completely, and it was a serious struggle for me. I, I just found myself battling with my mental state. I had to tell my supervisor to give me some time. She was like, okay, maybe you should go for therapy, and I, I'm not, I don't want to talk down on therapy, but I just feel my reality was I have the Holy Spirit inside of me and it's the best, you know, comforter that can sort out the whole issue. But I just found myself, don't let me use the word deteriorating, I could forget things easily. It took a toll on my marriage. I drained that guy. <laughs> I, I just, I was so uninterested, disinterested in so many things. I couldn't eat, couldn't sleep. Finding myself on the bed from... 10 a.m. until 7 a.m. My eyes are still wide away. I'm calling sleep. Please come, and it's not coming. And so, my it it I, I had to slow down on my thesis. Even when I I tried getting back on my feet, my supervisor was changing some things. And my thesis is something new, whereby there was really no past um, literature to have. So I was building it from the scratch. My analysis, everything, it was new. And so I really couldn't. I wasn't really fast with it because I didn't have things to you know like past work to, to cite or refer back. But I really want to thank God I'm, I'm standing, I'm, I'm still mentally stable. When I was walking down that podium yesterday when he called my name, I was like, for me, it's just that I'm alive, like I'm mentally stable. Because I feel like if you're not mentally stable, you, you really cannot, you know, do much. And before I graduated, you know, as at um, early this year, I was supposed to start searching for a job. I was like, my own is just peace. I didn't really want to follow the pattern, like after master's, okay, PhD, or go for marriage, or just, just maintain status. Anyone close to me, I always tell them, mine is peace overall. And I feel like once you know your purpose, you're not really pressured to do what other people are doing. And I want to thank God I wasn't pressured. In terms of job, I want to also thank God for his faithfulness, you know, for placing me in a place that I'm so fulfilled and I'm happy about it. I know it just keeps getting better and better. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Praise the Lord. I just want to thank God for everything. Uh, <laughs> I have. I don't know how to <laughs> where to start from. Uh, what I can say is, I had no former 
high school education. Wow. I wrote SSE back home as a private candidate and the rest follow up. God has been so faithful to me. And even here at ETSU, early childhood department, we have two focus. It's either you do uh, research or you take the COM exams. And most people or the students will opt for their comms because there wasn't any advanced training for research. So you have to do everything on your own. I opted for research. And I remember the point in time my supervisor told me, Clara, is it because of the comms that you are running? Then I will tell you comms is the cheapest. <laughs> so <laughs> I will advise you, you should think over it. And I told her, I want to do the research. I want to take advantage and learn the process. And God being so good, my research happens to be the first international thesis at the department, both at wow. master's and doctoral level. Wow. <laughs> the stories are... <laughs> uh, coming here to ETSU, I think we were four. I am all, the only one who got a visa to be here. And I noticed that I was given four years visa, which is not normal. Because studying from others and hearing their stories, I was told they will normally give you two years. Yes. But the God favor was also around. And everything I touched was blessed. I want to thank God for everything. God has been faithful to me. And I want to thank pastors and everybody here. We've been so supportive and appreciate each and everyone here. God bless us all. God bless you. <laughs> yeah, um, all I can say is I'm blessed. Um, I'm supposed to graduate this December and I've graduated. But along the line, I started applying for schools and I got admission to into a PhD program. But then I had not finished my ETSU coursework and I do not meet the requirements to graduate. And uh, because I came in the spring, wanting to go back to school in spring, you know, funding is difficult. And I've gotten funding for the fall. So what do I do? Do I leave ETSU and go to that school and uh, after one and a half years, I have nothing? because PhD is a higher program. So I spoke to my supervisor about it. And uh, because of the favor of the Lord, he understood. And he said, you will work out something for me. So we designed a program. He asked me to take independent uh, research, which he will treat it as a graduate-only course so that I will meet my requirement. So that whilst I am there pursuing my PhD, I can do my thesis via Zoom. So I was literally doing two programs, one in ETSU with my thesis and the other, I mean, first year PhD program. And uh, it's, it's difficult. And uh, my wife and kid back home, coping with all the pressures that pastor said. So it was very tough. But along the line, I was relieved when the, I got a call from home that my wife had gotten a visa. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the pressure kind of went away because I knew that there is, to me, there is a bigger result ahead. And the greatest thing that every person can go through is to have a loving family, kind and caring wife. So knowing that they are joining me was great news. And God willing, it was difficult. I was able to finish my thesis, defended it successfully. It was tough there too in Illinois. I mean, taking real analysis, my guys know. <laughs> At the end of the semester, I was able to, I mean, get a good GPA to still keep me in the program. Coming here to, I mean, graduate successfully. And uh, whilst we were coming to a driver, I mean, he just at the back, but God willing, I mean, nobody got hurt, nobody got wounded. 
and we are here successfully. So I just want to say a big thank you to the Almighty God for where he has brought me, because when we look back from where we come from and where we are now, it can never be our might. It cannot be by our own mindset, because I am an average student. I've been the average guy all my life, but it seems like everything is going on like a dream, and I'm glad that the dream is a reality. I thank God for that. My brother. We give glory to the Lord. He reigns. We give glory to the Lord. He reigns. He reigns. He reigns. He reigns. He reigns. Oh. We give glory to the Lord. He, he reigns, he reigns, he reigns. Oh, we give glory to the Lord. He, we give glory to the Lord. He reigns. Oh, we give glory to the Lord. He reigns. La, la, la. In the beginning was God. Throughout the program was God. At the end, it's God. I am who I am. Just the grace of God. I came here with tears. The whole department, everyone had G. I was the only one who has tears. Pastor Arnold told me, Tommy, you are going to make it. And the Lord helped me, sustained me, and graced me to went through all that I went through. There were mountains. There were valleys. There were crooked ways. But the Lord brought the mountains down. He exalted the valleys. He made the crooked way straight for me. I am successful now. I thank God. Pastor Arnold, Pastor Demisa, Pastor Paul, wherever Pastor Ellen is, I thank God that the Lord brought you on my way. Joining this church has been a blessing to me. Please, if you are part of this church, involve yourself, engage yourself, participate yourself in everything that happens here. If you can serve here, serve. Don't let the pastor call you, come and serve, come and do this. If you can do it, do it. Serving in the house of the Lord has brought me to where I am. I thank everyone. I thank everyone. Ebenezer, my friend. I completed the same university first degree with him, but he had the opportunity to come here first. When I was in Ghana, Tommy, you can come. Apply, apply, apply. He encouraged me. God bless you. God bless you. And come here, all friends, Mr. Ben, James, everyone, everyone. I want to say, God bless you. He reigns, he reigns, he reigns. Hallelujah. We give glory to the Lord. He reigns. Adum bia yenya. Oh, Adum. Yet ya see Muna. Yeke ka ye ho. Oh, Muna. Yeah, yeah. Adum, Adum, yeah, Adum, Adum, oh, Adum, kasi, Adum, kasi, emuna ya kika ya ho, emuna, ah oh yeah yeah, Adumina. Hallelujah. 
I want to say a very big thank you to the Almighty God. It has not been easy. In fact, when we came, I came with a GA. And at the end of the first semester, I had a C in one of the courses. And it was so bad for me. Now, that was the course that was easy for almost everybody. And I remember Eric is my, was my roommate. And I, I told Eric that, Eric, I'm really struggling with, it, with this course because I had to sit in the house for seven years before coming back to school. And the sad aspect is that while I was home, I wasn't doing something chemistry related. I left the field and I was in banking, like I was in a bank. So just imagine, and I decided to come and start chemistry all over again. So after I had that grade, it was like I was supposed to register that course again. But I remember going to see the lecturer. I am not the kind of person who would go to a lecturer because I'm a bit shy. Like, you see me like this, but I'm really shy. So it was, I'm serious, I'm serious. To go to a lecturer, like, I don't have that courage to do that because in, in Ghana, like, you don't have that relationship with our lecturer, so I found it very difficult. But they, they encouraged me to go. Now, when I went, he asked me, why does it look like I'm struggling? And then I told him that I had to be in the house for a very long time. And I'm actually trying my best to pick things up. And then he said, okay, I shouldn't worry. Now, what happened was the final exams we wrote was ACS. And then he said, what he would do is, now, those who, if I'm able to, if the mark I had was able to exceed the national average, I'm not going to take the course again. And by the grace of God, that mark was actually above the national average. So I didn't have to take that course again. And, and I, I know that it is not because of anything that I did. It is just the grace of God. I remember Thomas and I always come here Tuesdays and Thursdays just to pray about our lives, just to pray about a lot of things. And when we were finishing, that is the part that we, we, we can see that it is just the grace of God. Now, everybody, like all the people we came with, five of us had one advisor. And unfortunately, we were the ones who research delayed. Like, because we were waiting on chemicals because of COVID, like everything was just a delay. And we were the last people to finish our work. I remember that even our submission, our thesis were submitted four days before graduation. And it is just the grace of God. We didn't have to pay any school fees for this semester, even though we had to um, transfer from the summer semester again into the fall semester. We didn't pay any school fees, and then everything went on smoothly. We thank God for our advisor, Dr. Standard. God bless him so much. He has been a blessing in our lives, and we pray that God will bless him. I thank Pastor and Mama. I thank Pastor Paul, Pastor Helen, and everybody, all my friends here, You've helped me a lot. Vincent, my roommate, Eric, God bless all of us. Thank you so much. Amati was also my roommate. Hallelujah. Um, I really don't know what to say, just that yesterday was one of the happiest days of my life because this degree was not easy at all at all <laughs> you know like i was the only girl in my department so it was you know these guys are strong they can stay up throughout the night to prepare for an exam and everything i'll easily get tired you write comprehensive you will fail you <laughs> you go again you know and i mean from june Maybe May was really difficult for me. I, I could call Pastor Arnold crying because this thesis was something else. You know, I was told I was not going to graduate. So, I mean, if your supervisor is supposed to help you, tells you, look, I don't think you're going to graduate. You need to go and register for a course for the fall so that you take it. But my department, it's, you can't say you won't do thesis. So it means that even if I take a course, I'll have to look for another thesis to do. But 
you know, I sent him an email. I will graduate. I'll finish this thesis. Um, I think it was within 18 days. But everything I wrote was rejected. I remember there was a day I had to rewrite my whole thesis. So I was behind my computer for 24 hours straight. And I remember Vincent will come. Have you eaten? What will you eat? And all that. <laughs> <laughs> And all I could eat was ensure that protein shake because I just couldn't eat. I didn't understand what is going on. Why doesn't this man like me? Because like, I don't even know what I was doing wrong. You just send me an email. I would not read. Like to receive those kind of emails, it was really heartbreaking for me. I'll call for Sano, I'll be crying. I I'm tired. I don't know what to do. And he would say, we'll pray about it. You are going to graduate and I did graduate and my work was original yeah <laughs> yeah 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 because one time I sent him a, a, a chapter and he told me you copied from someone and I'm like I copied from whom like I can write this I mean I think I'm smart but <laughs> it's me I did this but he said I copied and then I sent in my entire work and like your work is original you know so I don't know yesterday was one of the happiest days in my life and I thank God for seeing me through and I know he's going to do more this I believe so pastor I know thank you so 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 much pastor Denisa thank you for your kind words and motivation that really really helped me god bless you and god bless everyone vincent god bless you so much dorothy and kesawa thank you all for supporting me during my difficult time hallelujah um, <laughs> It has been God right from the beginning um, through to the end. And um, he has been so good. It has been two years of um, challenges, stress, and um, very unfortunate things um, happening even in the last semester. But thankfully, um, God has been faithful. Um, I remember one of um, the things that happened in the period of writing my thesis, that's in my final semester. Um, unfortunately, something happened. Um, some challenges I, I was facing personally in life, and that really took a toll on me. To the extent that um, in writing thesis, I write everything, send it to the professor. He says, ah, Eric, what is this? This makes no sense. <laughs> so, right, so. <laughs> and I'm giving it all my best, but why? What's happening? In fact, I couldn't have the mind to um, write anything good and um, my thesis are always cancelled and then rejected I have to sit down and write and even um, I remember during the, the, the final the, uh, the day to defense let's say today I was supposed to present to my professor and then my research mates whom Ima was part and <laughs> after that presentation the queries I had on, uh, I had on the slide I went to my answer God <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to do this presentation but um, God was so faithful. In the end, um, instead of revising what's on the slide and what I'm I was going to say, I was rather now uh, putting in words and then trying to um, make the slides beautiful. <laughs> but God being so good in the morning of the defense, I just don't know. How I was the previous day, the flow was not there. Things were just as fast that I just didn't know. But during the day of defense, everything was just flowing. And I was so happy that in the end, my supervisor had come around, shook me, Eric, you did very well. And that was very impressive. And I'm so much thankful to God. And um, I would say some of these experiences that um, I had, and uh, the stress I went through, I think, um, they, they really happen in order to build me up for the next challenge. And I can say that um, 
and my first semester PG program, even though things are hard, but the first semester has been so good. The results are so excellent. I'm so thankful to God. And um, I thank Bread of Life and the support system here. Um, I just don't know how it would have been if the pastors, um, Pastor Arnold, Pastor Vanessa, Pastor Paul, and the wife, Pastor Helen, and my colleagues in the chemistry department and everybody around, um, thank you so much. It has been a very good time, and I thank you so much for the support. Thank you. Um, uh, these guys who are pray, pray with me, uh, Thomas Hayford, my roommate, um, Emmanuel, and any other person who, who, who are praying with me in secret, and all the pastors, I'm so grateful. And today, um, I'm happy. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God has been good to some of us, and we want to praise his name and give him all the glory. It's not been easy, but the grace and the right hand part of God has been upon us. Right from day one, I came here, Brother Thomas has been very instrumental in my life. He directed me, guided me through the department, all the stuff I needed to know. He guided me and has been part of my life, and I am very grateful to that. And through him and Bobby, I got to know about Bread of Life. And I visited the family and I got to know that yes, this is a place of God. And I became part of Bread of Life. God has been so good to me. The first semester I came and COVID stroke. And what happened was I had to go online. That was my first time seeing something called online. But God was so good to me. My result was excellent. And I didn't struggle through my studies. When it got to the last semester, it's not easy to complete exactly two years in chemistry. It's not easy. So the last semester, there was a lot of pressure. I remember complaining to Pastor and Pastor Dumisa, and they were praying with me. And God been so good. I didn't know why my boss was pushing pressure on me, but at the end of the day, he told me the reason why. And God has been so good. I graduated exactly two years. As Amati said, I came acting three days or so. Then Amati joined. I was with Vincent in Vincent's room. I was sleeping on the same bed with Vincent. And he's such a great guy. He has been so good to me. Yes. So I'm so happy that God did so good things in my life. Um, things has been good and it has been move, moving on well by his grace and his right hand power. It's nothing of mine, but he has always directed me, opened the path for me, and showing me where I should go and where to step. And it has been so good to me. My supervisor asked me about my um, the defense and everything, and I said, I want to do it this semester. I can do it, though I was afraid that, yes, the pressure was too much. He might do this, he might do that, he might do that. And I had no time. The deadline was coming up for us to upload our thesis on uh, um, ETD. And I didn't know what to do. So I just, I just said, whatever should happen, should happen. <laughs> then I, 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 missed, I missed the deadline. But I heard this still voice inside me, you are going to finish, you are going to graduate. Yes, and that was the Holy Spirit. And pastor said they were praying with me. The grace was there. So I just had an email from Emily that I can upload it. And I did the upload. And this is where I am today, just by the grace of the Lord. The pressure that was coming from my boss, he wrote me an email and said, Yuma, after, after me thanking him, he said, Yuma, you've been one of the exceptional students I've had. And for what you have been able to do, I am confident that whatever field you choose, you can do well over there. And that was something I was very proud of that my supervisor could say that to me. And I was very happy. And I thank God and I thank everyone who God brought to my life, especially this great family, Bread of Life, that they have been part of me, Pastor, Pastor Arnold, Pastor Dumisa, the prayers. And the other thing we prayed about by the God, by the gifts of God, it is 
in line and it <laughs> That's that's another one will be happening soon because it's coming soon. <laughs> yeah, so I want to thank God and I thank the family for such a wonderful thing that the Lord has done for all of us in the name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs> yeah, I think second part. <laughs> there are some people I need to thank them, most especially James. James has been so supportive. And PK, PK is not here, but wherever he is, I said I'm grateful for her, uh, whatever he did for me. And when I came in, I was staying outside this section. So it was PK who would pick me up early in the morning for classes. It wasn't easy. I thank him and I thank God that James has been so good. And everybody, God bless us all. <laughs> Apostle Thomas. <laughs> Mercy, mercy is not a run. Mercy, God bless her. We thank you. Give me a chance. I'm gonna. Oh Lord. <laughs> If I had not been for the Lord, where would I be? If the Lord had not been by my side, where would I be today? Um, there's so much I could say, but really, I just want to sum it up. Um, I know my life is a miracle. I could have died long ago. I've had so many issues, but I'm so thankful for God taking me through this program. I remember, you know, after I did my MPH, I went to work at Mountain States. I took some time off. Then pastor was getting very busy at work, you know, who was going up for tenure. So we said, okay. You stay at home, and I, and I was happy to stay at home. You know, I'd been like running, 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 running. So he said, you stay at home, and I was like, okay, this is great. Stayed at home for maybe four years. And then we said, okay, now the kids are grown. You know, his, his tenure is, you know, complete. Let's, let's go back to school. And I was very excited about it, but I didn't realize what I was getting into. And, you know, he asked me several times. He says, Dumisa, once you start, there's no giving up. And he says, do you really want the DRPH? And I said, yeah, I want it. He says, okay, the only way you should get into PhD program is if you really, really want it. Otherwise, you quit, especially in the first year. So I said, no, I'm ready. So the program started. My first semester was so, so difficult. I mean, just I'd been a stay-at-home mom for four years, and then I had to now change my whole lifestyle. Most of the time, because of parking, I used to leave home at 6 a.m., 6.30, because I wanted to reach ETSU and park by Lamb Hall. I didn't want to be walking from Earth Fair or from the parking garage, you know, and all that. So it was very hard. It was hard on the children. They were starting a new school the same semester. We moved them to a new school. I mean, it was really tough. The demand, I mean, the long hours, everything like that. But it started getting easier. There was one semester where I missed six weeks of school because I had a pinched nerve. And I spent about four weeks just laying on my back, staring at the ceiling. And pastor had to feed me, take me to the chiropractor. He had to do everything besides his own work, besides church, besides taking care of the girls, cooking. He was taking care of me. Six weeks, I missed school one semester. Another semester, I had this terrible cold, which sometimes I think maybe I had COVID and we didn't know it was COVID. But I also missed school for about five weeks. That's two different semesters. But God was with me. I know God was with me. And I, you know, it was very hard, but I want to just, act, I want to say that for me to go through the program and finish and graduate, there are so many people who have helped me. Besides my husband, who has been phenomenal, my kids understanding, they were very mad with me when I started school. And then later they joined the program, you know, they, they you know, <laughs> but, you know, life was different for them. But I want to thank people in the church. You know, because sometimes we think as long as I'm going to school and I'm doing well and I'm getting the A's and life is going on, it's because it's me and God. No, there are people who have helped me through the program. I want to especially thank, and I don't want to miss anyone, I want to especially thank the praise and worship team for just really being there because if they hadn't been solid, I wouldn't have been able to be solid as well. For them coming every Saturday, being here, 
all of us are in school, right? Everybody's in a, in a very difficult program, but they would be here, would, would rehearse together. We were always here. We would, and I want to thank um, Brother Kofi. We went through statistics together, SAS together. I mean, we, we spent a lot of time in the library, in the labs together. Um, I want to thank people like, you know, Brother Thomas, Brother Hayford, you know, people who work in church who are equally busy but who are committed. I'm telling you, it's not easy to be committed. But these guys will come, and I don't know if they've told you, but like I'm really hyper when it comes to things. I'm like, okay, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. And, but they were so faithful. And I really think that even their success is because God saw what they were doing for the house of God. And even for me, I just feel like, the Lord just gave me the grace to go through the program. So I'm very thankful for people who work in church, who have supported me, who have been here, who have held the fort when I couldn't be here. Um, yeah, it's been a journey, but I'm so grateful to be able to say the journey is behind me, and I'm very expectant of what the Lord is going to do. So I want to just thank you so much for your support in everything. Amen. Amen.